Hello there, this is Clark with Learn to Blog. I believe this is the fourth video explaining how Jetpack works. Jetpack is a plugin that comes with the ultimate blog design and it's chock full of features. So this video may uh, be a little longer than normal, but um, I'll do my best to organize each feature so that you know you can e easily find whichever one you're after. Excellent. So let's go ahead and get started in uh, setting up Jetpack. So the first thing you have to do is um, you have to have a WordPress.com account to link into Jetpack to get all these features. And uh, that's a free account to have. So um, I already have one to use with this site. But um, if you don't have one already, what you're going to do is where it says need account, you are going to log in right here. And uh, that will, uh, or you're going to click this link right here, and it will create a, uh, it'll, it'll take you through the steps of creating a, a, uh, a login for WordPress.com. So I'm going to go ahead and put in mine right now. This is exciting. All right. Hey, look, we're in Jetpack. That's awesome. So, um, so this is probably the most crucial step, and it's done. That's it. Uh, essentially, it's it's taken care of now and it's activated. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move into all the different features that Jetpack offers. I'm going to go into settings and we're going to start with the first one and I'm going to explain what it does and uh, we will go from there. Beautiful math uh, is, is an attribute of Jetpack that allows you to... Um, create use short codes to create mathematical expressions that look the way they should um, versus trying to get the keyboard and trying to get the letters to do it yourself or using illustrator to to make it look right um, there's a um, there's a lot of options for uh, getting mathematical equations to uh, look properly um, there uh, if you go to um, if you go to Google and search uh, "beautiful math jetpack," there's lots of blogs that talk about how to use that. So if uh, if you do run a blog that requires displaying an equation or mathematical equations, then um, this is, I would say, a really great plugin for you. I, I would say it's almost indispensable. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely look into that one. A um, uh, great way to uh, to do that is uh, this little link down here. We click on it. Um, it says the web page is not available. That's interesting. So uh, I already looked it up here, and let's see here, Jetpack. All right. So um, this is straight from the website from uh, from. Um, WordPress's uh, Jetpack website, and you can uh, look through all the different options for for using this short code and um, getting the results you want. Also, uh, you know, it's it's one thing to look at the uh, information from the people who made this, but it's also quite a uh, another thing to to go look for uh, blog posts, uh, look for web pages that talk about you know the people who actually use this code, you know, versus the people who invented it. Um, you know, you can get some great information either way. Um, I believe. So um, that is beautiful math. Let's move on to the next one. Next uh, feature of Jetpack is Carousel. Uh, Carousel is uh, a really neat what's called a light box um, for viewing images on your website. I'm going to show you exactly how this works. And to really show you the difference between using Carousel and not, I'm going to deactivate it first and take you through that process of what that's like. Okay, so I've deactivated that. I'm going to go into uh, pages here. And when that loads up, I am going to go into just a, a sample page here. And 
then we are going to take a look at uh, we're going to create a gallery um, creating that gallery what we're going to do is uh, add media I'm going to select create gallery and then I'm going to select some random images here this one and this one sure create a new gallery so I could put captions underneath all these images if I wanted to I'm just gonna hit insert gallery and look at that it makes a nice little gallery on the page uh, it kinda crops it into these uh, 150 by 150 pixel uh, little thumbnails I'm gonna go ahead and hit update And then once it updates, I'm going to take a look at the uh, the page. All right, let's go ahead and view the page. All right, here it is. So. Keep in mind, this is without the plugin. This is, uh, or this is without um, the carousel uh, being turned on. So if I click on one of these, what happens? It takes me to this page. That's not great. If I click on this one, it takes me loads, blah blah blah. It takes me to this page. All right, so there's got to be a better way so what if I had that turned on I will show you what that looks like here's that page again I'm gonna reload it here alright so here's the page and we have carousel activated. Let's see what happens differently when I click on these images. Wow, we got a light box. That's cool. I'll go ahead and hit these arrows and I can see all the images and it's great. And look at this, full. full that's full width. So that image, it not only showed the, uh, the thumbnail in the gallery, but it also in the light box, it shows you full screen width here. Same thing with this one that's great and then um, you can put comments here in the bottom on each of these images if you'd like and uh, that's it that's how that works so um, you see uh, what the uh, image is named here in the uh, the bottom here and uh, you can actually use your keyboard uh, left and right to, to view all these images that's how I'm able to go so fast so that's that's pretty neat once you're ready to leave um, you have two options. You can either uh, hit this little X in the upper left hand corner or hit the escape key and that will take you right out. So that is, uh, that's what Carousel does for you. It's, uh, I think that's uh, pretty handy, pretty useful. Um, and uh, it's pretty lightweight as well. So uh, that's that. Let's move on to the next feature of Jetpack. <clears throat> All right, so uh, contact form. How do we how do we create a contact form um, with uh, this specific one through Jetpack? So if I go to uh, let's say if I go to post here, and um, I'll go into uh, post one of these sample posts here, and I'm going to create a brand new form. To do that, what we're going to look for is uh, I'm going to, oh, I don't know. Let's add a form at the bottom here. So let's say you had some sort of great service or some sort of uh, something that you wanted feedback on. What you can do is uh, this new button has shown up since we've added uh, Jetpack, Add Contact Form. So go ahead and click on that and see what happens. Here's what your form will look like. 
name, email, website, comment. We can move these around. Um, we can edit what it says. This could be, you know, something else if we wanted to. It could be, you know, subject, whatever you want. Um, and then if this looks good, email notifications is the uh, other option up here. Enter your email address. So I'll put in Clark at learn to blog .com. What should the subject line be? Um, we'll say this is, uh, I don't know, people interested in uh, my big offer or interested in product A. How about that? And then um, save and go back to form builder. So that's saved. And uh, add this form to my post. And it did that. So we were talking about short code earlier. This is an example of short code. See these little brackets here? And uh, here it is. So, which is pretty neat. Um, another one, let's see here. I think that's it. That looks good. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit update. Okay. So here's the post. Let's scroll down. There's that form. It's right there. And uh, it's uh, all the styling is dictated by the uh, theme we chose. And that's why, you know, that little red button shows up. So there is that. And then um, I can put a I could put a title above here is uh, give me your feedback. Let me know. Let me know what you think or or something like that. Just above here. If I wanted to do something like that. If I scroll down, there we go. If you're interested in this product, let me know uh, and I will send you a coupon code. And you uh, put that information down there. You probably put, uh, send me a message if you're interested in this. That kind of is a better call to action right there. So that's just another option you have, which is great. You know, that's just, you know, kind of a drop in the bucket when it comes to uh, this, this plugin. All right, let's move to the next one. So when people give you, so when, when people send emails to that, through that form, where do they go? Just so that you know, they go right here, feedback. So you'll probably see a little number here if you have any messages that you haven't read yet. Um, so any, anybody who sends messages through that form, you will receive it right here. Okay, so custom CSS, what is that? So we've already gone to, uh, let's go to configure. All right, configure. So this is the uh, edit CSS area here. If you're not familiar with uh, what this is, then you may want to skip over it. If you're interested in uh, what CSS does and how it all works, um, and you're wanting to, or if you are, uh, if you are a web designer and you understand uh, how that functions, then this is a good place to load in your custom CSS. Why? Because, um, granted, you know you you can change the uh, the CSS and the child theme. Which, by the way, if you go to editor down here at the bottom, um, this is that. This is the CSS for the child theme. This is all this stuff, and it dicks. It dictates, like, say, what heading one is going to look like, what heading two is going to look like, or heading six, you know, what, what font that's going to be. Um, it, it does a lot of different things, um, like uh, buttons, that button where we hovered over and it turned red. Um, that, is, that is controlled with this right here. So you have a, a button hover, and it turns this, uh, this, this color here that's represented in... Uh, this hex hex code. Um, so, if all this sounds uh, a little too much and you don't want to mess with it, then you know you kind of skip over this part. Uh, if 
If this is something that you're um, interested in learning, maybe learning a little bit of code, you know, it's, uh, it's you know, knowledge is power, so you uh, feel free to do that. Um, and it's good to see, okay, that's that makes this happen. And uh, you can actually go in and change hex codes. If you want to know what hex codes are, do a Google search on hex codes, and it'll explain what it is and how to convert a color into this code, and you can change it out to whatever code you want to. Um, and that's how that works. All right, so the next attribute, um, the next feature of Jetpack is, uh, let's see here, custom content types. Now, I've done a little bit of reading on this one, and this is a, this is a powerful, this is a powerful little guy here. It's, it's actually pretty awesome. And uh, I kind of thought about um, different ways to use this or examples of how to use this. Um, I want you to think about it like this. Imagine you have a list of services or you have a list of um, you, you have a list of different projects or you have you know different different things that you would continuously you maybe reference in other posts or or something like that but it's not quite a page it's not quite a post it's it's something else it's like a project right so what that what this does is it creates that that middle point between page and post and um, it it enables this portfolio area is what this is so I'm gonna click on that right now and what you do here is you would add a brand new project to this portfolio and I, um, I don't have any projects here to show you you have to have at least one um, for it to, to do that and to view these once you've created them you would go into um, I mean for example I go to add new we'll do that real quick so that's loading <clears throat> and once that loads we could say you know what I could use this to uh, show off the the different plugins so we'll call this um, premium um, premium plugins G -I -N -S. and uh, I'll list off say we'll put the lo we'll put the logo in here add media we'll do we'll do gravity forms insert that guy in there and oops. we'll do say um, some features to gravity forms And then I could do uh, another one. Actually, let's let's center that. So that would be uh, one project, and I'll go through and I'll maybe list another one. You know, we'll add one more. This soliloquy that should pop in here. Yep, yeah. we'll center that as well. And uh, and yeah, those features in. I'm sure there's a prettier way to to do this, but you kind of get the idea, and then I can publish that. Can even set a uh, featured image here, which is I would do that, but I don't really have a featured image to kind of showcase these premium guys. Um, and then uh, let's see here. That is publishing. Did that happen? That's happening now. Lovely.
Then on the front end of my site, I can go to put the, I don't know, portfolio. O-R-T-F-O-L-I-O. -O. Enter. See what I get. So here we are. Here is premium plugins. This is this is it. So um, what I could do is, you know, I could put a read more link in here or something like that, and uh, I could showcase these. So it kind of keeps it separate from my posts, which is kind of nice. If I want to do a a post style listing of all my, uh, like I said, my my services or or whatever I'm trying to showcase. Um, it's a nice way to keep it all separate. So I highly recommend that one. That's, uh, I can think of, you know, five different, um, ultimate blog design clients I've had who that would have worked really, really well with. So, uh, maybe I'll contact them and let them know. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's look at the next wonderful feature of Jetpack. That's extra sidebar widgets. Let's configure that. What this is, is um, the ones that say Jetpack next to it are the extra widgets that you now have access to. So display WordPress posts, you have uh, Facebook like box that's built into this, Gravatar profile, um, and we can kind of go into that later. Uh, let's see what else we have looking for jetpack image display an image that one's pretty uh, straightforward um, cool and all you have to do is click and drag it into a widget area over here into your site and it will display um, wherever this is so that's great um, cool and that's what that does so let's uh, move on to the next one alright so gravatar hover cards configure see what this is all about so avatars an avatar is an image that follows you from weblog to weblog uh, appearing beside your name when you comment on avatar enabled sites here you can enable the display of avatars for people who comment on your site oh okay so for example there's um, there are people out there who have WordPress.com accounts, and these accounts allow you to have a profile image, if you if you will, and they're called gravatars. These gravatars can show up by your by your comments um, when uh, you comment on someone else's site or when they comment on your site. It's good to have. So um, it's uh, definitely this is the default one. You can you can choose uh, a different one as the default one. Um, and you can have different options with uh, subscription settings are down here as well. But I think that's a, a different one as well. That's pretty cool. Um, and then you can uh, you can even do a rating for your blog if you wanted to. And that's it. So just adds a little extra some extra options for uh, those who comment on your blog. Cool stuff. So what is next? All right, so uh, we are going to talk about Infinite Scroll. Infinite Scroll, that is a plugin that allows uh, your content to just kind of keep flowing at the bottom of your screen. And uh, how that works is, uh, I think I can show you. Looks like, uh, let's see if it'll work here. This is um, this is how it's supposed to work. When you scroll down the page and you have multiple posts, this site has about 10, 11 posts right now. Um, as you scroll down, you should be able to um, auto load, so you don't have to hit a, a next page button. Let's see what happens. See, it's already it's already doing it. It's already loading these pages in, and I'm not having to do anything. See it kind of working on that right there? So, and then it, it continues to load even more 
more pages. So that's what that's what infinity scroll is, infinite scroll. Um, but here's the truth in the matter: it uh, this plugin doesn't actually uh, work with uh, this theme. Um, I went in and I found some code that allows it to work. Um, that so I added it on exterior to this plugin here. But I did add it just so that I could demonstrate what that is. Um, and what, you know, if you uh, choose to use a different theme in the future, um, that's that's what it's supposed to do. If, uh, if you know, you, uh, you want that feature in your site, let me know uh, when we, uh, when you, when you get your site. And uh, I will, uh, I'll send you instructions on how to, uh, to make that happen. So that's in Infinite Scroll. Very cool. All right. So the next feature we're going to talk about is this one, JSON API. What this does is this is a developer's tool for allowing uh, certain programs outside of uh, services and programs outside of your website to be able to access information that's inside your website. Um, and it's um, that's as far as layman terms that's about the best I can put it um, if you are not a developer ignore this this has absolutely nothing to do with you don't worry about it that is uh, that tool I'll even go f as far as just to read it to you um, Jetpack will allow you to authorize applications and services to securely connect to your blog and allow them to use your content in new ways and offer you new functionality. Developers can use WordPress.com's auth <laughs> auth uh, authentication system, authentication system, and WordPress.com REST API to manage and access your site's content. So if that is something that interests you, please uh, jump into that. And uh, that is all I can really say about that one. Video. All right, Jetpack Comments. Let's, let's see what that is. Uh, Jetpack Comments enables your visitors to use their WordPress.com, Twitter, or Facebook accounts when commenting on your site. Jetpack tries to match your site's color scheme to automatically uh, scheme automatically, but you can make manual adjustments at the bottom of the discussion page, uh, settings page. That's pretty neat. So uh, you're kind of opening up your audience to WordPress.com, Twitter, and Facebook accounts when commenting on your site. That's kind of awesome. So um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, that's highly recommended. I would definitely have that activated. Um, and uh, yeah, so definitely jump into that one. Uh, Jetpack single sign on. So I know what this is. Um, I don't have to jump into this. So if you have a WordPress.com account, or um, if you do, you can use that account to sign on sign into your website instead of whatever your normal sign in is that you've set up you can use that instead if you want to if you need to um, for example if you've lost your password or something like that you can't remember what it is it happens to the best of us um, you can use that instead to, to sign in that's pretty cool alright so the next one we're going to talk about is likes what is likes well I'll go ahead and click on it and tell you Likes allows your readers to show their appreciation for your posts and other published content using their WordPress.com accounts. Your readers will then be able to review their liked posts from WordPress.com. Displayed posts, I'm sorry, displayed below your post will be how many people have liked your post and the gravatars of those who have liked them. And that is what likes is. So um, if you have likes uh, turned on and displayed on your, on your site, it will look a little bit like this. So on the front of our site, you'll notice it right here. This is the likes. That's what that does. So you can, uh, you can uh, click on that, and that's, that's what that does. 
So if uh, if you don't like the way that looks or you uh, you don't want that, then um, you know what to do. You go in and you turn off, you disable or disconnect or deactivate likes here in the settings. And that's it. All right, and the next one is Markdown. Markdown. So what is Markdown? So I've been doing a little bit of reading on Markdown, and it is like a an easy version of HTML. HTML is uh, it stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and um, that's why they call it Markdown versus Markup. They um, it's a little bit different and simple. So the uh, versus me going in and just kind of demonstrating what Markdown is. Um, because you may never use it, but if you're interested in learning about it, and if you know a little HTML, then you might be, because uh, I just read a little bit about it, and I'm, now I'm interested in it. So um, there's a website right here called jetpack.me slash support slash markdown. If you go to this website, it's going to give you all the information you need to know about markdown, and the difference between using markdown and uh, using using HTML so with that said um, this plugin is meant for I believe it's just meant for the comments section so your commenters can use this markdown language to stylize their comments and uh, you know make it look a little nicer so uh, so I'll go ahead and read the description for you. Markdown lets you compose posts and comments with links, lists, and other styles using regular characters and punctuation marks. Markdown is used by writers and bloggers who want a quick and easy way to write rich text without having to take their hands off the keyboard without learning a lot of complicated codes and shortcuts. That's all. That's all it is. So it looks like you can use it in posts as well. So that's really cool. Um, and just a quick highlight, uh, I think I showed you this a second ago. So right here, um, writing in Markdown. So um, if you were to do this in HTML, it would look drastically different. Um, you'd have all kinds of um, tags and things like that. This uh, seems a lot easier. So yeah, I really like that. Um, yeah, so like I said, if you're uh, interested in that, uh, visit that website and uh, learn more about it. Um, I'm always about learning learning new things. All right, let's see what's next on the list. Okay, the next one is mobile theme. What is mobile theme? Well, tell you what, I'm going to show you what mobile theme is. Um, it's not one of my favorites uh, because uh, most of the themes I choose to use are what's called responsive. That means I don't need a mobile theme. Um, when they're viewed on a cell phone or something like that, uh, they automatically look great, you know, without doing something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this, and then I'm going to show you what the demo site looks like with this activated. All right. So Here's a good question. How can I show you what the this site looks like <laughs> on a cell phone? Well, what's cool about um, the browser I'm using, Chrome, is I can uh, go in, uh, hit the Inspect Element button here, and there's a little cell phone looking guy right here. So if I click on it, it's going to show you what the site looks like uh, on a cell phone. The only problem is um, it's still detecting that I am on a, I am on my computer. I am, I think it, it detects my operating system is what it does, and then it it does its thing from there. So I will, uh, maybe I can shoot a video of my uh, cell phone. We'll try that. All right. So here is what the website looks like on my cell phone here. Um, it looks completely different than uh, it would if that website was uh, with that plugin not turned on. So I'm going to turn off that plugin 
and uh, then I'm going to look at the site again, and we can look at uh, the difference. Okay, here is the same website, but um, that feature has been turned off now. So you can see the theme kind of coming through um, and uh, making, you know, the site look cohesive between what it looks like on a desktop and what it looks like on a mobile phone. So hopefully that, uh, that illustrates what that plugin does. So let's move on to the next one. Um, monitor here is um, if your site goes down, if something happens to your site and um, it is not available or something weird's going on, it'll shoot you an email and let you know that your site has gone down. And then when your site comes back up, it'll shoot you an email letting you know your site's back up. So uh, that's what Monitor does. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it may be kind of irritating uh, to get posts like that uh, or emails like that. So uh, it really kind of lets you know uh, what type of... Uh, hosting account you have and sometimes they do maintenance and sites go down but uh, hopefully uh, they shouldn't stay down for more than a, a minute or two so that is what monitor does notifications what is that keep up with the latest happenings on all your WordPress sites and interact with other wordpress.com users you can view your notifications in the toolbar and on wordpress.com so, looks like notifications is right here. So that's what this guy is right there. So it looks like we don't have any notifications. We're good. Great. So, let's go ahead and jump out of this. Um, OmniSearch. What is OmniSearch? Search once. Get results from everything. Currently supports searching posts, pages, comments, media, and plugins. OmniSearch plays nice with other plugins by letting other providers offer results as well. Well, that's neat. Search everything. Oh, look, OmniSearch is right here. Let's pop into that. Oh, is this everything? So, let's see here. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's what OmniSearch is. It's a search tool for all the different features and stuff on your your uh, your back end of your website. It's not for visitors. It's for you for uh, configuring your site. Wow, that's pretty cool. I like that. Never used it before, obviously. <laughs> so, wow, cool. I wonder what else I could search. Let's say... Um, Let's do Gravity Forms. That's a plugin we have installed. Let's see what that does. Okay. So post, pages, comments, media. We have these plugins, all different kinds of plugins. You can even get more if you wanted to. That's pretty awesome. So, wow, it searches all these things. That's cool. I like that. So let's go back to settings. So we have Photon. What is Photon? Give your site a boost by loading images and posts from WordPress.com. Content Delivery Network. We cache your images and serve them from our super fast network, reducing the burden of your web host with click of a button. Well, that's pretty cool. That means uh, images load faster. That's awesome. Now, I will give you some feedback on uh, Photon. I, uh, on my personal website, I, uh, I added a plugin that does cool, thing, cool things with photos, and uh, Photon was uh, causing that to have issues. So sometimes some plugins can kind of conflict with each other and cause problems. So uh, keep in mind that... Um, you know, you may have to do some troubleshooting because, like I said, this is like a whole bunch of plugins installed at once. So, um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so the next one we have is post by email. What is that? So let's let's find out. Post by email, I believe, 
is the ability to send an email to a specific email address and you are able to post to your site without even logging in, which is pretty neat. So um, however you compose your post in that email is how it will look on, on the website. And um, if you have memorized short codes and things like that after using them for so long, um, I'm sure you'll be able to use those in the email as well. So um, yeah, so but that's you may want to test that um, before you know you depend on using the uh, using the short codes. So to do that, um, you would um, you'd have to in, enable uh, post by email first. You would enable that post by email, and then um, it will give you an email address. Right here, it, it generates one for you. So um, every email that you send to this email address will automatically be a post. Let's test that out to see if it works. So I'm going to copy this email address. Copy that. Paste that in there. And subject is, I think that'll be the title. Let's see. My awesome post and put in wow I just posted to my site from an email and I can take this I can make it bold make it really big go in <clears throat> and then say uh, what oops let's make that smaller oops. let's try this again what will I do next and make that not bold Okay, go back to the demo site, get out of this, go to the front page here, see what happens. Look at that. My awesome post, wow, I just posted it to my site for my email, what will I do next? That's pretty cool, it worked. Neat. All right, and that's exactly what that plugin does. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, that'll be a fun one to try for yourself. All right, let's see what's next. Publicize, let's take a look at that. Publicize allows you to connect your blog to popular social network sites and automatically share new posts with your friends. You can make a connection for, your, for just yourself or for all your users on your blog. Publicize allows you to share your post on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Yahoo, and LinkedIn. And you can manage these settings. So it's going to take me over to that settings page. And we've taken a look at this before with the likes. So uh, Publicize and Likes kind of work together. They're like two different guys. So uh, if you like that, then uh, definitely connect your social media to that. So I would highly recommend that. All right, so let's take a look at related posts. That's the next one. So what is related posts? I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Related posts shows additional relevant links from your site under your posts. If the feature is enabled, links will appear underneath your sharing buttons and WordPress, uh, WordPress.com likes if you have these turned on. <clears throat> And then you can get more information uh, on this link. And uh, let's see here. This feature uses WordPress.com infrastructure and requires your public content be mirrored there. If you see intermittent issues only affecting certain posts, request a re-index of your posts. Cool. So I imagine that's a link as well, so you can click on it and get more information on that. So let's see what that looks like. Go into our demo site. Um, this is the front, so I'm going to click on one of the uh, one of the posts here.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll on down. Oh, wait, there it is, related posts, and here they are. So it shows uh, three related posts underneath uh, the original post that you're looking at. Um, I imagine these posts are um, typically they would be shown uh, per category or something like that, um, but they would be uh, related somehow. So um, that's it, really. And then you can just navigate to a new post uh, whenever you want to, which is uh, pretty great. So that is that, and uh, that's that's related posts. Uh, it's a great way to uh, increase traffic to your uh, to your site, or at least to keep traffic there a little bit longer. So if someone goes there to find a post, they uh, they uh, were searching for, and then underneath, if it's related, you know, they can kind of start clicking around and, and bouncing around your site a little bit because you have that there. So it's really not a bad, it's it's good, it's a good thing. Um, yeah, let's see what's next. All right, so the next one looks like sharing. So uh, let's go ahead and activate sharing. Um, from what I understand, uh, sharing is a um, is a feature of uh, Jetpack that allows you to do the same thing that uh, simple simple share does uh, in Genesis here. So simple uh, simple share right here uh, pretty much does exactly the same thing. Um, this one's just built into uh, to Jetpack. So you know you have two different options here for uh, for two different looks. So uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, so we're going to see both of them turned on together. All right, so now you can really compare them. Um, all right, so here is Simple Share. Here this is. And here is um, Share. So um, if you wanted to configure this, you could go into, where are you? Sharing. There you are. Configure. OK. So. Here are the uh, the three that I've selected. If I wanted more, like uh, say Google Plus or Pinterest, you know, maybe even Reddit. Put those in there and save changes. Excellent. So if I reload the page, there they are. All of them are in there. So, um. I do have other options for how these can look. If I wanted to change the style, uh, that would be right down here. Um, right now it's set to icon and text. If I did icon only, it changes it to these stylish little circles. Um, let's see what that looks like below. There we go. So there they are. So it's a little smaller, a little bit more minimal, um, if that's a, a look you like. So uh, this. Uh, However, the one above does show how many times it has been shared on those specific networks. So that's pretty neat. Um, if you're kind of starting out and you're new and you don't want to see a bunch of uh, zeros or low numbers there, um, and or a uh, post is not being shared a whole lot, you may you may prefer this. And then once things start picking up, you can switch over to kind of show off those numbers if you wanted to. So. You know, it's 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 food for thought, something to think about. So that is sharing. Um, you also have the option to have these links um, maybe not show up on the front page, maybe only show up on the post when someone clicks on a post, or uh, any of these other different um, uh, content types. Um, you can have uh, a specific tag on your Twitter uh, if someone shares with that, which is pretty nice and uh, you have some other options down here as well so that is uh, that is share and uh, um, it's uh, it is a decent option if uh, if you want to stick with uh, that over simple share that is uh, definitely an option so let's see what's next all right so the next one we have here is short code embeds all right, so um, I'm going to read this one off to you. Short codes allows you to easily and safely embed media from other places in your site. 
with just one simple code, you can tell WordPress to embed YouTube, Flickr, and other media. Enter a short code directly into your post page, post or page uh, editor, to embed media. For specific instructions, follow the links below. Great. Well, that's wonderful. So we have all these different types of short codes in here, and I am actually going to demonstrate this for you. Um, and some of these, uh, what's really neat, is you don't even have to use the short code. You can just, uh, you can just paste in a link to a, a specific site or a post or something like that. And uh, because this is uh, activated, it'll do all the work for you, um, which is great. So I'm going to give you an example of that with Facebook. Um, and beyond that, feel free to jump in here and kind of read about it and uh, test Test some stuff out. If you uh, if you have membership memberships at uh, some of these um, these services, stuff like uh, Daily Motion or you know maybe um, Bandcamp or even Vine or uh, Vimeo, you can uh, embed those as well. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's do one with with uh, Facebook. So from what I understand, you have to have the URL of the Facebook post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to learn to blog Facebook. And there it is. Excellent. And I am going to go into, say, a post here. Let's say WordPress security threat. Ooh, that looks interesting now to get a specific blog post what you do is you actually click on the timestamp um, so I'm going to click on that timestamp and it brings up just the post now with that post brought up you go into the address bar here and that is the URL for that specific post so I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go to a uh, post here so um, let's pick a post. Let's do this one here. All right. So a bunch of you know demo content in here. Um, I am going to delete that, and I am going to just post uh, that in there. So I think that did it. I'm not sure. Uh, let's go ahead and preview changes. That's this little button over here. Let's see if it worked. Ooh, headline one is still there. Maybe there's some styling going on. Um, so I'm going to go into text. It shows me the HTML. See if there's anything funky going on. So I am going to just delete all of this and try that and hit update and see what happens. So that's updating. Give you changes again. Hey, look, it's there. That's cool. I think it's going to reload anyway. I guess sometimes it takes a minute to pop up there. So I'm going to give it a second, you know, because a moment ago it wasn't working. And there it goes. It shows up. It just takes it, I guess it just takes a moment there. So. Um, and there it is. That's uh, that's what that did for me. That's pretty neat. Um, I'm going to try another one because, you know, I feel spicy. Let's do that. So uh, let's see here. Go back to Jetpack and see if I can find a um, 
a different one. And that was under short code embeds. Click on that. What's another one I can do? Let's do, do YouTube. Yeah, you can do YouTube. Let's see how we do that. So I'm clicking on that link and it's going to tell me how to do that. All I have to do is copy the URL, paste it. That's simple. I can do that. So let's do, oh, I don't know. Let's do a video. Let's go to YouTube. And then let's go ahead and do, say, oh, I don't know, um, Genesis Framework, all right, and we will, how to create custom homepage with Genesis Framework, cool, okay, so I'll select that. <laughs> Hey, thanks Whoa, that was kind of loud. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that one in there. I'm going to copy the URL up here and just copy that. I'm going to go into the post and uh, I guess I can go in visual. It really didn't matter. And then um, paste it in there. Hey, wow. It shows it. That's cool. And then hit update. Man, that is so easy. That is so easy. You know, um, we have like three or four different ways to embed videos and pictures and stuff like that. Videos really isn't that big of a deal. But um, stuff like posts and things like that, uh, showing you a, a live version of that, is uh, that's powerful stuff. That's neat if you know how to do that. So uh, this is a good one to remember. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna do a post about um, something you found online or news article or something like that, this is a, a really great way to uh, reference that. Um, yeah. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to reload this post and. The other one takes a minute to load. Let's see if they both load. Let's open they do. Video plays. Hey, thanks for joining us on Studio wow, Press wow. TV. They should control their volume. That's crazy stuff. Oh my goodness. Well, that's strange. Let's go back to this. Take a look at text. And update. So there may be an issue with doing more than one in a single post. That could be an issue. You know, this is kind of why we do these videos, so you know you have an inside look at uh, how this works. Hey, wait, no, it worked just fine. There it is. It just for uh, some, I guess, some of the short codes or some of these uh, types of um, shortcuts, they uh, they take a while. That's crazy. Okay, so it's in there. Neato burrito. All right, so that is how that works. Um, if you're interested in doing different types of posts, uh, short code posts, then uh, definitely do that. Um, I believe the, uh, let's see here. Um, get rid of that. Sample post, headline, demo. Yeah, I think uh, the YouTube one, you have, uh, you have options within the short code um, to to do playlists. You can uh, customize 
you know, just follow the instructions down here. You can uh, look at this. You have all kinds of different options that you can uh, you can do to like say you want it full width or uh, a certain size or something like that. You can uh, you can utilize these uh, instructions to to do that. Oh, that's really neat. You can start at a certain point in the video. That's neat. Okay, so uh, that is embed short codes. Um, the uh, let's see what the next one is. Okay, so the next one we have here is site icon. Site icon is uh, well, it's it's the thing in the URL, the address bar. It also controls if someone saves your site to their their mobile phone what uh, image pops up there and uh, for Windows 8 users um, it it you know it decides what tile I guess what what image is going to be in that tile so if I go to site icon what's uh, what's the official thing here site icon lets you create an icon for your site this icon will be used as a favicon mobile icon and title on Windows 8 computers. To add a new icon to your site, head over to Settings, General, Site Icon, and Upload an Icon. So the reason why the picture of this is here is um, just left of the www here, um, you have a little image here. And that is what a favicon is. It's that thing right there. So. Uh, so yeah, so that's what that is. So um, I uh, I just got done making one. So let's go ahead and um, add one over there. Uh, there are websites out there where you can um, upload your logo or something like that to um, the site, and it will create one for you. Um, and we can go over that in just a moment. So uh, site icon is right here. So we're going to add a site icon. And I'm going to choose File, uh, Site Icon right there. That's the one I made. And Upload Image. It's asking me if that's that's the one I want. Uh, yeah, crop it if you need to. Sure, go for it. And there we go. It uh, creates the three different versions I need and uh, it's done so uh, my site icon has been uploaded back to general settings sure sounds good so now if I reload my page see if that changes at all it might not um, sometimes it uh, oh wait it did actually cool so uh, if you look at the very top here, it's actually uh, not there, but it's in the uh, tab here. Just like uh, MailChimp's one's right there. This one's right here, UBD. Very, very cool. So if I were to save that to a cell phone, that is the image that would be there. So that's really neat. I like that. Okay. So, um, yeah. So that's what Side Icon is. It's pretty straightforward. It's not really complex. So let's uh, let's jump on over to the next one and see what that's all about. Okay, site verification is the next one right here. And uh, this is going to be a quick one. This is actually uh, really, really straightforward. Not a whole lot of features to this. So what this is, I'll just go ahead and read it off. Uh, use these tools to verify that you own or control your website with other external services like Google, Bing, and Pinterest. Uh, verifying your site allows you to access advanced features on these other services like webmaster tools or getting a verified badge. We'll just uh, add an invisible um, meta tag to the source code of your home page. The way this works is uh, when you go to these uh, pages like Google, Bing, and Pinterest, um, they may ask you to verify you on your site if you're trying to bring services in from these uh, these other websites. And what they'll do is they'll give you this uh, string of code that you need to copy and paste somewhere in your site. Sometimes they say the header or something like that. 
what this does is uh, you don't have to figure out where to put it. You just go to uh, configure for site verification and paste that code right in to the area indicated. So I'm going to go ahead and go to configure and we're going to take a look at that. Okay. So these are the areas um, where you would put that code and they have little examples of what that code would look like right there. Um, and you just copy and paste it in there, hit save changes and you're done. That's as simple as it is. I mean, it doesn't get a whole lot more straightforward than that. So, um, so yeah. So, you know, if you're interested in finding out what those extra features and extra options are, I highly recommend uh, looking into that and uh, seeing what, uh, what more you can do with Google, what more you can do with Bing or Pinterest, and uh, maybe uh, verify your site. And that is that. So we're going to go ahead and go back and look at the next item on the list. Okay, so the next one is spelling and grammar. So uh, that's definitely one that a lot of folks can uh, use some help with. So let's go ahead and check out what this is. The After the Deadline Proofreading Service improves your writing by using artificial intelligence to find your errors and offers smart suggestions. After the Deadline proves, uh, I'm sorry, After the Deadline provides a number of customization options, which you can edit in your profile. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've select configure, and we are going to go there and see what our options are for spelling and grammar. All right. So proofreading, right here. Um, automatically proofread content when a page or post is first published. Or a page, um, yeah, we'll do that. Published uh, post or page is updated. Sure, we'll do that too. Um, enable proofreading, proofreading on the following grammar and style rules when writing post pages: uh, bias language, cliches, complex phrases. Uh, looks like diacritical marks, double negatives, hidden verbs jargon, uh, passive voice, phrases to avoid, redundant phrases. The proofreader supports English, French, German, Portuguese, and Spanish. Your interface language, see above, is the default proofreading language. Use automatically detected language to proofread posts and pages. Sure. Ignored phrases. Identify words and phrases to ignore while proofreading your posts and pages. So you can even add in stuff that you may use all the time in your site uh, so that it doesn't uh, ding you on that every single time. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And that has been saved. Let's go over to posts and see what this looks like. So I'll just go to a random post here. Jump into the visual side and I will highlight all this. Go ahead and delete it and just, um, I'm going to fast forward through this part and just start typing out some stuff here. Okay, so it says the page at Ultimate Blog Design says the proofreader has suggestions for this post. Are you sure you want to publish it? Press OK to publish your post or cancel to view the suggestions and edit your post. I'll hit cancel. All right. So we have uh, misspelled words. We have... Uh, a really bad misspelled word and we have these uh, grammar suggestions so if I click here passive voice um, explain so 
So it explains what passive voice is. So uh, is going to be, we'll say, uh, has so many features that this video uh, will explain, will, is going to be over an hour long. <laughs> it definitely will be. Will be. So is going to be, will be. Let's say will be over an hour long. What is this one? Hyphen required. Oh, okay. Hour long. And fix this one. Grammar. Blast. All right. And that's how uh, the spelling and grammar works there. Go ahead and hit update. And it's checking. Oh, it looks like I have another problem here. Fix that one right there. Update again. Okay, so that's how that works. No writing errors were found. Okay, great. So um, let's see what else we have. All right, so the next one looks like it is subscriptions. All right, let's, uh, let's read about that. Easily allow any visitor to subscribe to all of your posts via email through a widget in your blog sidebar. Every time you publish a post, WordPress.com will send a notification to all your subscribers. When leaving comments, your visitors can also subscribe to a post comment to keep up with the conversation. To use the subscription subscriptions widget, go to Appearance, Widgets, and drag the widget labeled Blog Subscriptions into one of your sidebars and configure away. You can also make changes to your subscription settings at the bottom of the discussion settings page. To customize the emails sent from your blog to your followers, check the settings at the bottom of the reading settings page. Well, let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're at the reading settings page and follower settings. So when someone subscribes to our blog or to your blog, um, it'll say, howdy, you recently followed this blog's post. This means you'll receive each new post by email. To activate, click confirm below. If you believe this is an error, ignore this message and we'll never bother you again. Comment, follow, email, text. Howdy. So, you recently followed one of my posts. This means you will receive an email when, you, when new comments are posted. To activate, click confirm below. If you believe this is an error, ignore this message and we'll never bother you again. So you can change these messages to whatever you would like. Now, what does this form look like? Let's go ahead and put one in and check that out. Oh, there it is. Blog subscriptions. Jake Pay is at the top. Okay, so I'll take this guy and I will put it into the primary sidebar. Okay, subscribe to blog via email. Um, enter your email address to subscribe to this blog and receive notifications of new uh, posts by email. You can change these messages around if you want. Um, you could say subscribe to um, ultimate blog design via email. Um, enter your uh, email address to subscribe to this blog. Okay, email address. So we'll say your email. Subscribe button. Um, yeah, sure, subscribe. That works. And then you can put a success message in there. So success, an email is just sent to confirm your subscription. Please find the email now and click activate to start subscribing. That's cool. So go ahead and hit save. 
And I'm going to jump over to the demo site to see what that looks like. There it is. Right there. Your email. So I'm going to go ahead and put my email address in here to see what this looks like. All right. Subscribe. All right, page reloads and it says success. An email is just sent to confirm. Awesome. So I'm going to go check my email right now. Oh, wow. There it is. Howdy. And then the message we talked about earlier, confirm follow. There you go. Save changes. So it opens up a uh, WordPress.com page and uh, shows you your different subscriptions and stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's subscriptions. And so now if I were to uh, do a post, I'll do a post real quick to kind of illustrate this. There we go. A brand new post. This is just a test. Now, I wonder if I'll receive an email. I did. Congratulations. You're now subscribed. Uh, it's just confirming my subscription. Maybe another one comes through. And here's that email. This is just a test. Brand new post. Cool. And you can read more and it'll take me right to the uh, right to the page. That's awesome. Very, very exciting. All right, so the very next feature we have here is Tiled Galleries. All right, let's see what this is. Create elegant magazine-style mosaic layouts for your photos without having to use an external graphic editor. When adding a gallery to your post, you now have the option to select a layout for your images. We've added support for rectangular, square, and circular galleries. By default, galleries will continue to display using standard thumbnail grid layout. To make the rectangular layout the default for all of your site's galleries, head over to Settings, go to Media, and then check the box next to Display All Your Gallery Pictures in a Cool Mosaic. Um, very, very cool. All right, let's go ahead and configure that right now. All right. So, Image Gallery Carousel. I believe that's it. Background, nope, that's not it. Tiled galleries. Display all your gallery pictures in a cool mosaic. Okay. Save images, or save changes, excuse me. All right, so earlier, I uploaded about five or so pictures of uh, a wedding I went to, um, just so that we could, uh, you know, demo this uh, this feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a page, and I'm going to show uh, how this is done. All right, so now I'm going to insert a gallery. So to do that, I go to uh, Add Media right here. And I'm going to Create Gallery. I'm going to select all the pictures I just uploaded. Create new gallery. Tiled mosaic is by default the first choice here. Size, thumbnail, go medium, that's fine. Random order, sure. Link to none. And hit uh, insert gallery. All right, there it is. There's the gallery. I'm going to go ahead and hit update. Let's, uh, let's see what it actually looks like on the front of the page. And there it is. That looks pretty cool. And if I had uh, captions on it, they would show up underneath here. And if I wanted to take a closer look to, of any of these pictures, I could just click on it. And the carousel option that we have activated with um, Jetpack lets me uh, go through the pictures just like this. To get out, I, all I have to do is hit the X or hit Escape. Um, and that also does it. And that is what a tiled gallery looks like. That's very, very cool. So let's see what's next. All right, so the next one here is Video Press. 
So VideoPress um, is, uh, with the VideoPress module, you can easily upload videos to your WordPress site and embed them into your posts and pages. This module requires a WordPress.com account with an active VideoPress subscription. Once you've purchased a VideoPress subscription, click here to configure VideoPress. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to, to uh, demo this one because I don't have a video press subscription. Um, and the reason I don't is because um, I don't mind the uh, YouTube using YouTube and uh, and uh, any ads that may play. Uh, it just doesn't really bother me one way or another. Um, also, uh, by having a YouTube account and um, putting your videos up there, uh, it's uh, it's great search engine optimization to, to do that and have those videos link back to your website because uh, Google owns YouTube and um, if you're wanting traffic to come to your site, that's, that's just honestly a, a better way to go about it. But if you uh, are adamant about not having any kind of uh, advertising uh, like that on any of your videos or wanting to display only your videos and, and nothing else, or, or, or you just don't like YouTube, um, VideoPress may be a good option for you. And to, uh, to do that, we would uh, click on this link here, and it will take us to uh, the WordPress.com store where we can get uh, VideoPress for $60 a year, if that's something you're interested in. It's not a whole lot of money, but, um, you know, it's uh, depends on if that's a good solution for you, really. So uh, here's all the uh, all the add-ons with that, uh, or all the features of that upgrade. And then, if you wanted to go in and configure that, you would uh, do that on your back end of your site, and it would uh, be done right here. So. It would uh, cover things like um, connected to WordPress.com blog, video library access, free formats, and default quality. So these are the different options here. Uh, sorry I couldn't go more in depth with this. Uh, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm not going to buy a $60 a year subscription to, uh, to do a demo on this. So... Uh, if you do have questions about this or if you're very interested, feel free to contact WordPress.com support and I'm sure a representative would love to tell you all about it. And so let's check out what's next on the list. Okay, so what do we have next? We have WP.me short links. Read about that. Instead of typing or copy and pasting long URLs, which is a web address, you can now get a short and simple link to your posts and pages. This uses the super compact wp.me domain name and gives you a unique URL you can use that will be safe and reliable. To use short links, go to any already published post or publish something new. A Get Short Link button will be visible under the post title. When you click it, a dialog box will appear with the short link, and you can copy and paste to Twitter, Facebook, or wherever your heart desires. All right, so let's see an example of this. Um, I should be able to go to any page or post and uh, get this short link, and let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to go to Forms. I got a page 3.2. How about that? So here's the title here, and under link, underneath the title, it says permalink, and all the way down off to the right, we have edit, view page, get short link. Right there. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to click on that button, and we have a tiny little URL here. Um, it's, uh, you know, HTTP colon backslash backslash WP dot me backslash and then this alphanumeric name, I guess, is here. So you just copy that and paste it. Now with, uh, with sites like Twitter, where they count every single character you use, um, 
in your tweets. Uh, these can be uh, very useful, very useful indeed. Um, so that is what this does. It just shortens uh, the links to your pages um, for, uh, for sharing purposes. All right, so with that said, let's see what the very next feature is in Jetpack. All right, so the very next feature we have here is widget visibility. What is widget visibility? Control which pages your widgets appear on with widget visibility. To control visibility, expand the widget and click the visibility button next to the save button, and then choose a set of visibility options. For example, if you wanted the archives widget to only appear on category archives and error pages, choose show from the first drop down and then add two rules. Page is 404 page and category is all category pages. You can also hide widgets based on the current page. For example, if you don't want archives widget to appear on search results pages, choose hide and page is uh, search results. And that's how that works. So uh, let's see if we can, uh, you know, hide and show some uh, widgets here to kind of uh, demonstrate how that works. So I'm going to go to the widgets page. And in the primary sidebar, let's do, do something simple here. Let's say the blog subscription page. Let's say um, we only show this on blog posts. So only on posts. Um, let's see what options we have. So visibility is right here, right next to the save button. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to say show if, um, let's see here. Uh, page is post. Page is post. Show. Save. All right. Let's see what happens. So this is the front. Um, no, this is the front of the site. Yeah, this is the front of the site. Um, I am. Um, and this is the uh, subscription widget here. I am going to reload the page and see if this disappears. We'll see if it does. And it looks like it's gone. It disappeared. So now if I click on this post here, it should show back up because it's only supposed to show up on posts. And there it is. It shows up only for posts. That's great. That's pretty neat. I like that. Um, I think that would be actually a good widget to show after every post. So let's see if we can move that around. It's kind of related. So I'm going to take this and we have an after entry area here. So I'm going to take this and move it here. Now that that's there, I'm going to reload this page. Look at that. Shows up right there. I think it was kind of meant to show up there. It's a good spot for it. Okay, so uh, that is how that works. And honestly, if I have it there, it would only show up after the post anyway. So, I mean, honestly, I could have this only show up for certain categories or uh, certain tags. Uh, let's see here. Tag is... Let's see here. Let's say tag is, I don't know, framework. Save. So what that means is um, this is gravity forms here. So this is not a framework. However, this genesis here is a framework. So if I reload the page, it disappears. 
and recent comment or related comments or related posts comes up and I'm going to go ahead and select the Genesis framework post I did and see if it shows up at the bottom and there it is it's at the bottom that's how that works so you can control exactly where these widgets show up um, and I think that's a powerful tool that's pretty neat big fan of that one let's see what the very last feature is for Jetpack okay the last feature here that we can activate or deactivate that comes with Jetpack is wordpress.com stats so I'm going to read this off to you. There are many plugins and services that provide statistics, but data can be overwhelming. WordPress.com stats makes the most popular metrics easy to understand through a clear and attractive interface. Let's see what that looks like. So I've only had um, it running on this site for about a day or two, so we're probably not going to see too much on here. But we can poke around. All right, so uh, we only have a couple views here, not a whole lot, um, but you get an idea of what it looks like. You get to see how many people are viewing your your site. You can choose to look at this over days, weeks, months, and uh, you can see search engine terms, refers, who, where visitors are coming from, uh, top posts and pages that are on your site and uh, recorded clicks and you have uh, subscriptions looks like uh, the one I did earlier from an, another tutorial is uh, for the blog so that's neat awesome and that is the site WordPress uh, statistics site statistics so um, it's a good tool to have and uh, that should uh, That should answer the question, and that should sh uh, wrap it up for all of the features of Jetpack. If you have any other questions, please let me know down in the comments, and uh, feel free to email me any questions you may have. I'm happy to answer them. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day, and take care. Bye-bye.